Hello, Commander. Bonjour, Sky Pilots. My name is Ghost, and this is Power Hour, a series where we give a game one hour and a bonus 30 minutes to try and hook us in. Today's installment will be Sky Rogue. So, suit up, pilot. We gotta clear the skies and make way for our air flotilla to push through. So get this, the Sky Rogue's devs hit the nail in the coffin with this one. Sky Rogue is a fooshy rogue action flight simulator. Blow things up over land, sea, and air on an infinite number of procedurally generated islands and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with enemy aces or assault giant flying aircraft carriers. But watch out for volleys of missiles. When you die, you're dead. Remember kids, if you die in real life, you die. To water down what they're trying to get across, Sky Rogue, as the name implies, is a plane-based roguelike game in which you're given one objective per procedurally generated map and are off. If you die, the whole game resets and you start over. You are generic Sky Ace number 3982467. You have no name and the faction you're a part of really just boils down to red versus blue, but in the air. For games like Sky Rogue, they tend to be pretty sparse on upfront lore, which isn't too surprising as most uh, roguelike games kind of expect you to be spending about 55 plus hours in game to really kind of find all the bits and pieces of lore that, have, that are kind of spread out through all the game. So it's not too surprising that we really didn't get a whole lot. We just kind of know those are the bad guys and we need to go kill them. So it's really no points being taken away that the game is kind of acting like a Catholic schoolgirl in terms of lore, but really no bonus points given for trying to be nuanced or anything like that in, in comparison to the other roguelites. Sky Rogue is at heart a weapons focused roguelike that rewards the player for going the long haul in an attempt to try and kill and clear as many objectives before they die. The game actually rewards the player for survivability over suiciding onto the objective and just restarting. This is displayed in the game allowing for players to return to the helicarrier and actually refit their jet back to full strength and then rearm all weapons and flares to avoid oncoming missiles. I quite like this as it really does reinforce the concern about losing the pilot. We can't use you if we lose you, and Skyrug knows this and realistically wants you to try and continue to progress deeper into the game. This is also kind of compounded with the idea that usually if you get deeper into the run, the odds of you immediately after dying and then picking the game back up and going, all right, I want to play for another hour and a half after dying to 40 missile strikes, you know, it's usually quite difficult. So I like the idea that Skyrug is saying, hey, you know, let's try and keep your run going longer by giving you full health, by giving you flares, by doing all these extra things, so that way, you know, if you do die, it's, you know, it sucks, but the odds of you picking the game back up are kind of low, so here, let's just try and further your run instead of just, all right, you're dead, see you later, kid. Mechanically, this game is clean. Plane movement, on point. Combat, on point. Environment, on point. I didn't really run into any bugs or glitches, and overall the aesthetics of the game, it really just draws you back into that 90s arcade style of the, the game booths and everything. I definitely, I used and definitely recommend using controller if you are going to play Sky Rogue, as I really do think the WASD mechanics kind of just remove you from the overall experience, as well as trying to pitch and rear the jets using a mouse instead of an analog stick, just doesn't feel the same. The weapons, which very likely scale with the enemy difficulty as you progress deeper into the run, can either be purchased or upgraded at the end of each run after you die. Speaking of objectives, you have kill X number of pilots, 
destroy some buildings, shoot down X number of bombers, and sink X number of naval vessels. I wouldn't be too surprised if there's maybe one or two more kind of like boss levels in the game. However, after playing the 45 minutes, I did start to see those kind of objectives start to cycle. So my guess is we probably were able to see most, if not all of the potential objectives. I also want to give a quick shout outs to the initial design of the base plane that you start off with. It's actually quite quite sturdy for all things considered. Usually with a lot of the roguelikes that you play, uh, you'll get kind of like a good base character, unit, weapon, etc. Um, but then there's kind of always better options. And in Sky Rogue, this is definitely the case. However, I was able, again, I was able to get through about either eight or nine different levels uh, before the, you know, the level one plane, if you will, started to kind of really show its, its weakness just because it's such a young starter plane. Much like the difference between the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 7, the quote-unquote unique and millions of different maps that Skyrog has to offer probably kind of just boils down to the same general map with either similar colors, or excuse me, slight color changes, enemy variants, or maybe objective placements throughout the map, which is kind of the one thing and the one hindrance that I have seen with a lot of roguelites and some other games that always kind of claim to have millions of unique and different combinations and possibilities allowing for fresh and organic gameplay. Which, yes, that is true. It's always quote unquote slightly different. However, you know, if you do sink 55 hours into this game, which is extremely possible, all of it kind of just boils down into the same stuff. There's always, you know, you start off with these general maps, you start off with these general enemies, the enemies progressively increase as you get through more levels, and then eventually you're fighting only the elite type variants of the monsters because, hey, guess what, you're further into the mission. Um, and this is kind of something that at least I know I've, I've seen with uh, Risk of Rain and a few other roguelike games. I like to think of Sky Rogue as the kind of game that casual aircraft people like myself can really easily get into when it comes to jet-to-jet -to -jet combat. No realistic gravity to have me black out when I pull too many Gs, or years of military training and study just to have me crash headfirst into the ground. Sky Rogue is what Risk of Rain would be for anyone who's looking to spend hundreds of hours listening to old retro racing music while counting their kill streaks of idiot red pilots who didn't get the memo that the Red Baron had resurrected on the blue side. The game plays and definitely feels like it's trying to reward you for trying to shoot down your first or your 25th pilot, and I can definitely say for the about $20 USD, it's definitely well within its right to charge as much. It's a good solid game, and while I did only play 45 minutes, that's more just because I died on my, I think it was the ninth mission, and just didn't want to, you know, spend an extra two and a half hours running through a whole nother run. My name is Ghost, and thank you for listening to today's installment of Power Hour. I hope you have a good day, good afternoon, good night, and goodbye. No realistic gravity to have me black out when I pull too many jeers. Jeers.